Greetings, cadets! I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love! Label 2 was released in July of 1993. The focus is shifted from the mecha goings on of the earlier movie towards political themes tying to Japan and the complicated lives of the characters. Sounds fascinating, doesn't it? <laughs> well, anyway, cross your fingers and hope for the best as we strap ourselves into Pat Label 2. It's three years later. And much has changed. Three months. I'd have thought you'd be more used to it by now. Yeah, well, I'm not. But Sergeant Ota is still Sergeant Ota. You're supposed to hit the target, not the... Oh, Sergeant Ota. Ever shall you remain my favourite psychotic giant robot pilot. Newly promoted Deputy Section Chief Shinobu Nagumo is at a conference. Making her way back to base, Chief Nagumo is held up in traffic. This turns out to be a blessing when the Yokohama Bay Bridge comes under attack. Detective Motsui goes to retrieve the tape of the explosion, but someone beat him to it. Fiendishly clever. Poses a detective and steal all the evidence. Genius! Oh wait, no, hang on. If there's a lot of evidence, you'd probably get found out as not being a detective after all. <laughs> someone who just happens to work for military internal affairs. Now we enhance it. I'm no expert, but at first glance, it looks different to the plane they showed on television. Ah, the enhance button. It's an absolute technological fallacy. But I'll spare you the rent. Mr. Arakawa explains further in his car. And Chief Nagumo is shocked by a ghost of the past. Yukahito Tsuge, a founder member of the Defense family. Now why do you suppose that Chief Nagamo was so shocked to find the face of Yukihito Suge staring back at her? I know, but I ain't telling. But there's no time for manoeuvring, as jets have scrambled, and they're heading for Tokyo. Two squadrons intervene, but there's no sign of the bogies. Invisible planes? Another Amazon plot? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Feminism's been taking a bit of a backing of late. But shock! There never were bogeys at all! <gasps> Ghosts in the machine! I knew we hadn't seen the last of that red text. Arakawa discusses Suge's history. And a very important detail is revealed. Suge was married at the time, and he and Nagamo were rumoured to be having an affair. But neither you nor I care about that, so let's move on. Returning to base, Section 2 received their orders. Which doesn't go down well with Goto. Commander, do they want a full-scale revolt by the Air Defense Command on their conscience? You know, for a giant robot movie, this movie's been surprisingly light on giant robots. who tries his damnedest the next morning to keep hey, things from escalating. Your labors aren't ready for action. Is that specific? Sir. Malfunction. Are you... Captain Goto, ladies and gentlemen. Proving once again that they don't call him Razor Sharp Goto for nothing. But a call from Arakawa has even worse news. Development. Development. The chiefs of the Defense Force have accepted ultimate responsibility for the base commander's actions and have resigned. Japan declares a state of emergency. Motsui investigates a suspicious warehouse. 
and Chief Nagamo goes to meet her former lover. Which, of course, doesn't go entirely to plan. Stay where you are! The next morning, attack helicopters take out bridges and police hardware, and three blimps disrupt communications over Tokyo. Also, Captains Goto and Nagamo attend a disciplinary hearing. But if you came to see that, then I think you're watching the wrong show. Goto assembles the old crew for one last mission. Hiya! Surprise, surprise! You but back in Tokyo, the blimps were filled with gas. <laughs> or not in fact, as the gas is merely coloured smoke. Fake gas attack? Well, I've heard about them, but I've never actually been involved in one. And so the mission is on. But razor sharp Goto saw through Arakawa from the start and arrests him. It was too detailed. The only way you could have known what you did was as a member of his group. And so the misfits of Section 2 face down 200 meters of hell. To deliver Chief Nagamo to her former lover. Who is promptly taken into custody. Ikehito Suge, I came to arrest you. As our movie ends. So then, the question today is not whether or not it deserves a place in the House of Love. The question today is. How does Pat Label 2 stand up to Pat Label 1? This movie is slow. Even at 107 minutes, it feels unnecessarily padded. Even before mentioning that Mangle Entertainment's dub once again changed lines, even if there wasn't as much room for gratuitous swears. And while Pat Label 1 was just as padded, it felt nimbler, lighter. This is heavy and portentous eschewing frivolous mecha fluff for a serious conversation on the nature of war. In all honesty, it's almost worth judging on its own merits, but it still keeps the characters and the procedural nature of the franchise. But if you're looking for giant robot action, Japanese silliness and a rollicking good time, look elsewhere. That's not to say that Pat Label 2 is a bad film, far from it. It's just more of a political thriller than it is a giant robot movie. But then again, if you're looking for a good political thriller anime, then you could do a lot worse than Pat Label 2. Anyway, thanks for watching and join me in three weeks as we begin the epic tale of the boy wizard Harry Potter. Bye now!